I got a question in the comments asking how to insert external hardware with the M32 core specifically because although I have made previously a video about external hardware inserts with the M32, the board itself, that requires you to use the quarter inch aux inputs and output jacks and the M32C does not have these. So most of it is very similar to how you would do it on the big console. The only difference is the physical inputs and outputs. Instead of using the quarter inch jacks, you would need to patch your AS50 or stage box XLR inputs and outputs in order not to waste any processing channels or any buses from the mixer itself. Here's what you're working with. M32C connected to the DL32 stage box through AS50A, and I have an XLR cable connected to output one back into input 17, just so that we can generate pink noise and look at the meters and see what's happening and figure out if it's working or not. So here's the pink noise. Raise the fader of the bus itself. So that signal is coming out of it. And also I'm going to raise the level of channel 17 so that it's going to the main left right and raise the main left right. We have signal going on. And on this side, I have another cable that is plugged into output 11 back into input number 29. And that will serve as my aux out one and my aux in one. And in between these will be your external hardware. There are two things we need to worry about for inserting hardware. The aux outputs and the aux inputs. So let's go to the aux out page. And that's where by default you will be assigning signals to your quarter inch aux outputs on the big console. But in this case, we just need to make sure that the aux outs are set as inserts. Because if they are assigned to something else, then you can't use them as inserts. So make sure that your auxes are set to insert. And you can also flip the polarity right here. This is not phase, although it says phase, but this is just polarity. There's difference between them. People often misuse these, but I will not go into that right now. You can flip the polarity right here. Just make sure that your auxes are set to insert and that's it. But now the signal is going to the quarter inch aux jack that does not exist on this mixer. So we still need to assign XLR outputs of the stage box to give us these aux signals. So I'll go to the AS50 page and since I'm only using one stage box, I will assign AS50A 9 to 16 to be user out 9 to 16. You could alternatively set it to aux 1 to 6 slash monitor. Whenever you see aux, it's the aux outputs. Whenever you see aux in, it's the aux inputs. Keep that in mind. So now the outputs 9 to 16 of my stage box are assigned to user out 9 to 16. So I'll go to the user out page and find the outputs 9 to 16 right here. And I'll assign them to aux. And this aux, remember what it means, aux output. So since I showed you earlier, I'm plugging into output number 11 of the stage box. That means that I need out 11 to be assigned to aux 1. Now, whatever signal is supposed to go out of the quarter inch jack aux 1 will be going out of output 11 on my stage box. This is all for the aux outs. Let's go to the aux ins. I'll go to the inputs page and you have aux in remap. Click on this and set it to user in 1 to 6. Since there are no quarter inch jack inputs on the M32C, you will have to get the aux inputs from somewhere else. And that is the user page. So I'm gonna go to the user in. And since I want my aux input number one to be coming in from input number 29 on the stage box, I will go to AS50A, 25 to 32, and assign input one of the user page to AS50, 29. So now what I've done is that I told the console that aux out one is gonna be output 11 of the stage box and aux in one will be input 29 of the stage box. And this is just for the physical connections. But for the console, these are still aux one. And this is important for inserting stuff on a channel or on a bus or on the main left right because you will use the aux numbers. So now I can close the routing page, go to the main left right, select it, and then go to the config tab. And right here I have the insert to choose what I want to insert on the main left right. So I will turn it on and I will click here and select aux one. And as you can see right here, I only have one channel, which is the left channel because I'm only using one input and the left right is a stereo signal. So it needs two outputs to be going to the effects unit and two inputs to be going back into the console. So since I'm using only one cable, you will see only the left side. So for the left right, of course, you would want to assign two outputs and two inputs. So go back into the routing page and on the user out, I'll say that output 12 is aux two. And on the user in, I will say that user in two will be input 30 of the stage box. So right now, if I unplug 
the XLR cable from input 29 and plug it into input 30, you will see signal on the right channel, right here. I'll do it again, unplug and plug. Okay, so for the main left right, it's always odd and even next to it. When you choose aux 1, it knows that it's aux 1 and 2 for the main left right. That's how it goes. But we're not done yet because you might risk feedback. And this is really dangerous and you don't want that to happen. Since that signal is an aux, it's coming on the aux channel. And by default, the aux channel is on the main left right. You can see that right here. So if I raise the fader of it, guess what will happen? It will feed back. We don't want that. So bring it back down. I'm going to go to the main tab of that aux and turn off the main stereo button to make sure that this aux is not going back into the main left and right and causing a feedback. And if you want to be extra careful and take an extra safety step, you can go to the config page of that aux and set the input of it to off. And you can see right now, it went black. There's no more signal going on. So no matter where you send it, you will not risk any feedback. Now keep in mind, you can still use that aux channel with another input. So I can set it to AS50A32. And if I have something plugged into input 32, then I will have signal on that aux and be able to use the four band EQ that is available for that aux. It's still useful. It's not like you're wasting your auxes. Now there's a slight difference when you want to insert external hardware on a channel or on a bus compared to the main left right because on the main left right it's coming out and back into the same signal chain but with the channel if I want to insert on channel number 17 I would select it then go to the config turn on the insert button and choose aux number one yes I want to overwrite it but now unlike the main left right the signal will not come back into the channel it will come back on the aux so you would actually need to use the aux I'll set this back to to aux 1 and you will raise the fader of the aux and make sure that it is on the main left right but what will happen now is that things will phase because both the channel and the aux are going to the main left right so you're gonna select the channel remove it from the main left right and the aux channel is the signal of channel number 17 after going through the insert same goes for a bus i will send channel number 17 to bus number 7 just because this channel has signal so i'll select bus number 7 these are sends on faders and I'll send channel number 17 and go to the bus page, go out of sends on faders, bus number 7 now has signal. So I'm gonna raise the fader of that bus and I'm gonna select it and go to the config page and turn on the insert and select aux 1, yes. And by default the buses are not going to the main left right but just check for that that it's not going and your post insert signal will be coming on the aux. Cool, that's it. Now if you want a more in-depth detailed video about external hardware inserts, click on the video on the screen right now because I go into much more detail. But if you like this video, give it a like and I'll see you in the next one.